<laughs> Greetings on chappers! Dave. Does it groove? That is the ultimate question. And the answer is, we're not sure yet, but we're going to find out for you, with these amazing new pedals from Ashdown, I say new, they're not new. They're not new. No. No. They've been around for quite some time, and uh, I was fortunate enough to get hold of a load because I was like, I've already checked out your pedal, so send me some. Um, and they went, yes, Dave. Yes. <laughs> so we've got a trifecta of terrific tones for you from two incredible artists, Nate Mundell, James Lomenzo, and one Ashdown one. Yeah, it's their kind of like, I guess, flagship drive pedal. Mm. So uh, yeah, that's the Drive Plus. So you've got the Nate Mundell, which is kind of a, a two-channel, can work in stereo pedal. So you've got these two channels uh, for different gain staging, and then you can add them together and get one sort of hella drive. Um, and yeah, of course, the, from the amazing Foo Fighters. Yes. Uh, and then obviously the Lomenzo, which is the same as the Drive Plus, it's just a mono. Lomenzo, of course, from every great metal band that ever existed. All of them. Including Megadeth. Yes. Um, and Black Label Society. I'll be using this lovely five string Ibanez because it's fat, and I figured Drive Pedals needed a fat tone. Uh, Big thanks to Ibanez. Yeah, and we are running into the Rootmaster 800. Which currently has a Triceratops sat on top of it. That's for tonal purposes. Absolutely tonal purposes. Also, did you know, sorry, I said <laughs> did you know, what I meant to say was did you know right. that scientists recently discovered, this, is, this isn't a lie, mm. a piece of amber with a dinosaur's tail inside it. What sort of dinosaur is it? Not that every video will be about dinosaurs, <laughs> but it should be. Uh, it was a tiny, tiny dinosaur. So it wasn't a big bit of amber then? Nah, this is a piece of amber that size, mm -hmm. but it had an, an entire tail in it. They could tell because it had the vertebrae at the end, and it was perfectly preserved, including feathers. Wow. Yes. Feathers, so the dinosaurs muscles. were feathered. Uh, well, a lot of them were feathered, yeah. Muscles, oh, yeah. tendons, feathers, the whole tail. And that's all I've got to say on that subject. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with the uh, one that isn't the signature pedal, the the standard bass drive plus. Yeah, so I guess the, the flavour, as I said before, we kind of like tried to work out what, what all of the different elements are. Yeah. Um, and I guess this would be more of a straight up drive. It's kind of cool in that it's got a kind of low frequency and a high frequency knob, and then a balance so you can blend between the two, which helps sort of dial in how distorted you want the low end and how distorted you want the high end. Mm. So you can kind of like tune your drive. And you've tweaked it to the um, way you like it, haven't you? Yeah, I think I think this is kind of like how I would use it. Um, Should we get a before tone? Yes, so before is... Quite a lot of top end in that. There is. A lot um, more than I was expecting you to I tweak could probably in. Probably dial that back. That's because you've got all of the top end a in there. A bit. <laughs> uh, maybe you like quite a bright sound, don't you? Try this. Great. It's really riffy. Yeah. Makes you want to spank out kind of a rage against machine type sort of. Yeah, vibe. I think it is that kind of it's kind of more of a ballsy, uh, grunty yeah. thing. Yeah, ballsy grunty thing. Yeah. Like a warthog. Yeah. <laughs> like a warthog. <laughs> cool. So yeah, I mean that's that's kind of that pedal. Um, I like the little tiny carrying handles on top. I think they're probably really handy. Um, yes. Do they also prevent your foot from smashing the screen? Is that what that's about? I don't know. I guess so. Maybe. Hashtag? Next, yeah. <laughs> so the MM2. Yes. Nate Mandel. Nate Mandel. Yes, so obviously. If he was Nate... my friend, I'd call him Nate Mandel. Nate Mandel. Yeah, right, Nate Mandel. <laughs> I mean, he obviously he designed this pedal with Ashdown. 
uh, Alex, I guess, designed around his needs. He's probably um, played a few gigs, probably couple, knows what he needs. A couple, yeah. He's probably quite experienced. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and, and I guess he kind of wanted a pedal that he could have kind of two tones dialed in, uh, I guess, probably a kind of like crunchy one that he probably has on all the time. Yeah. Um, just for a bit of kind of like more of a pushed, clean sound. Uh, and then a second channel for his kind of more crunchy stuff, and then the idea being that you can stack them together as well, right? Um, and have more of an actual drive sound. Um, so obviously back to clean again. We're on, uh, and then if I put in the first stage, uh, you have this guy. Uh, out of the context of a band, I'm still finding that quite a pleasant sound. Yeah. What interests me about bass tones is that when I listen to them in isolation, normally I'm like, huh, not really feeling that. But then when it's in a band, I get like, it sits exactly where it's supposed to be. Yeah, and, and I think the thing, the key probably with a lot of these uh, pedals is it's about kind of getting the tone and the cab and the bass right. Yeah. Because really it's not, you know, I, I mean, I'm guilty of having an over the top drive sound. Dave Hollingworth, <laughs> you are guilty of having an over-the-top drive sound. Uh, I kind of go down the guitarist route. And that. sentenced to funk <laughs> for the rest of your life. Um, yeah, I go down the kind of guitarist route and have a lot of saturation yeah, and yeah. I'm just very careful about how I dial in my tone and stuff, but I think most applications of drive and bass is just kind of have that thunderous have the cab like shake. Yeah. Um, and I guess that's kind of what that tone's doing there, really. Okay, um, so step on the second button. So the second one is this. Mm. So go from one stage to second stage. Nice. And then obviously you can stack the two. Yeah. Um. That, that bamba cams quite well. It does. I noticed I had a good bam in it. Bam, bam, bam. I'm, I'm noticing I'm still struggling to get used to playing a five string. Yeah, but it's fun. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a challenge. I like it. It's nice. It's um, so yeah, uh, and I think it's got the two outputs as well, so you can actually set it in bridge mode or stereo mode. And What's bridge mode? Oh, so it does both. So it does. Yeah. Um, is it true bypass? It is. Well, I think oh. they're all true bypass. Oh, okay, good. I think actually, it doesn't actually say true bypass on this one pedal. It does say it on the other team. I only said it as a joke, really, because. I just, I don't think it makes, I don't really care about true bypass. I like having a buffer on my pedal board anyway. I tend to use the bus tuner for all of that purpose. Right. Insider information. <clears throat> Why don't you step on that James Lomenzo pedal? So this is kind of, I guess, I mean, you can get a few different sounds, but I, th I think really the character that this brings to the table is a kind of like fuzzy sound. Um, it's less ballsy and more hairy. Right. Um, so, yeah, this is kind of the Lomenzo tone. add that to a, a warm driven valve amp sound? Uh, I guess so, I mean he probably doesn't have it quite as obviously a drive, Fuzzy, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and also I've got the, there's a frequency and a Q thing and I've got it kind of backed right down to kind of get that kind of, I don't know, that kind of tone really, if, if I mess around with this and change the Q, brighten it up a little bit. That's more queer. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I mean, the cue is quite sensitive. If I kind 
try and mess around with it whilst playing, you can kind of hear it sweeping through its yeah. different stages. So if I start at the bottom. There's a lot of cue sweep. Yes. That's cue. Uh, it's cue sweep. <laughs> cue the sweep, Rob. Do you have any idea how much these cost? I don't. Okay. But do you know what viewers you do? Because Ben. And there you go. I think that's great value. <laughs> that, that price that we don't know what the price is. Yes. It's um, almost as if we didn't research before we sat down to film. Folly. <laughs> Which is your favourite of these three then, if you could have a favourite? Um, I My favourite kind of pedal is probably the Lomenzo, just because I kind of quite like that fuzzy yeah. thing that it's doing. You know what um, you would do with it. <clears throat> I think if I could only have one of the pedals, it'd be the Nate Mandel. Nate Mandel, that's what I was going to say. Because yeah. it's most versatile. Yes. Um, but if you know that the tone you want is that just kind of like pushed, crunchy, clean, you want to get the amp just to drive a bit more than yeah. the Overdrive Plus is the pedal to go mm, for. They all have pros. They do. Are there any cons? Anything that you don't like about them that you would want to change? Um, I think they take up quite a bit of real estate. They do. Um, they're quite large pedals, although they're built very well. Um, and you could pave a drive with those. I, I like that, you know, the way that the knobs are recessed means that when you're stamping on the pedals, you're not likely to mess up your settings yeah uh, and they do look quite funky and cool but yeah they do take up quite a bit of space they do um they probably don't need to either i guess out of this range there isn't really that pedal that i would go for that kind of like um really saturated uh more guitar type distortion yeah um, as opposed to a drive. But not a lot of bassists. They, they are drive pedals, really. Though. Yeah, not a lot of bassists would use drive that way, and you're quite no. unusual as a bassist yes. in wanting that filth. So, uh, yeah. There you go. Well, I've been Chappers. Dave. And these have been spectacular Ashdown distortion and game pedals from Ashdown. Bye. Dave. <laughs>